Zoom. We're recording now. Hello and welcome to Monday, March 11th, 311 day. Um, are you down, down? Uh, you, you. Um, all right, Braulio didn't get that. Usually he gets my jokes. Um, down, down. 311, lyrics from oh, the band 311. No. Okay, all right, Amber. Uh, all right. Uh, today we're going to talk about color, color correction in Premiere, and then you're going to get plenty of opportunities to edit. As always, make sure I am not turning on my screen for some reason. Okay, I didn't turn on my video. Oh, there I am. <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm here. Uh, you sent me a new video. Check out Michael. We'll check it out after the lecture. How's that sound? Um, I would love to see it, of course. Uh, all right. Again. Uh, those of you in the lecture, if I for, stop sharing my screen for any reason, just shout out and let me know. Uh, haven't had any issues today, but hopefully we won't. But let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen with Premiere right here. We're looking at Premiere. Rocking, rocking, and rolling. Okay. I'm going to keep this up as much as possible. Um, all right. Let's go into our GAV uh, project. Oh, there's our Dune 3 trailer. Uh, yes, let's change our hardware. It's telling me I need to change it to that one. Let's say yes. Say okay. Screen sharing has stopped for some reason, but now we're shared again. This time with sound. That time I caught it. There we go. We're back. We're back at it. Where is our there's our Dune 3 trailer we had fun making? Um, but today let's talk about the basics of color correction here within Premiere. Now I know there's multiple projects and in fact, uh, we're, we have a lecture online that was going to become available about Da Vinci. And I recommend everybody, even people in class, check out our online lecture about Da Vinci Resolve, which is a prime, it's a free editing software. A lot of people like it because it's free, has a lot of options, but it also it, it actually has, um, uh, it's a, ma a major plus for color correction, really good tool and a fascinating way um, to color correct your image. And what, what is color correction? Of course, color correction is how we're going to take our image and we're going to match everything to feel the same. Um, okay. So for example, let's go here. Let's uh, reveal this in project. Let's go and just connect the, reconnect this media. Let's link that media. Let's locate it. We're going to say, okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clip here. I'm going to put it on our timeline. I'm going to open up a new clip, new clip, new clip. Are they all the same clip? Oh, yeah, probably. Okay. Let's take that one. Let's reconnect this one. Let's link media. Say, okay, oh, search. File not found, it's gonna be in here, search. Say, okay. Looks like it's this, all right. Let's go here in the middle and find just another clip. All right, again, I'm gonna link my media. It's gonna locate, not finding it. So I'm gonna search here, okay. And I want one more. Let's just go down here and choose choose these. Say link media, locate, search. Okay. All right. Now the reason I did this is here's a close up. And What's this one? Oh, I'm just not patient. Okay, there we go. It's a close up profile shot. All right, now we made our edit. 
let's do this. I'm going to turn on my snapping, snap it together. All right, here's uh, our edit as it looks right now. Let's go over here and see that we go from this shot. Let's change it to quarter so that it'll render faster. First and foremost, let's do this. Effects control. Let's scrunch it down. As we can see, we have a wide shot right here. All right, in this shot, again, our composition is this way because we brought in a high resolution into a sequence that isn't set as high of resolution, but you can see how far it crops in. And going by about, you know, like 40%, we can fit the image to how we want it to fit. Okay, so now we're looking at our image. Let's see if we can get it to play for us. All right, we really, the audio doesn't matter, but what I want to do is I just want to make it so that we can see that it goes from this shot So that shot, well, that edit doesn't work because he takes off his glasses. So let's just go back to where he has his glasses on. Now we can go the white shot to the close up. Still not a very good match cut because he's just reacting to someone. But what if we then go to this shot to that shot? All right. Now what's notable about all these shots? Well, first of all, it's not colored. This is the base that comes out of the red. And what we can do is we can actually go over here. Um, I'm going to minimize this actually so I can see. Uh, and we're going to be here. Hey, Jason, uh, in Lumetri Color. Oh, thank you, Jason. Got my back, Jason. Okay. Lumetri Color. Now, Lumetri Color gives us many different opportunities of how we can affect our color correction. So let's go into basic color correction, first of all. First and foremost, we're going to do with uh, no input here an auto. If I click on this image and just hit auto, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically detect the image. And as you can see, all of these different things jumped up. Now, it's basing it off of a, a light value. And maybe it's not exactly what I want. Now, most notably, everything still see, feels really grayed out. And it wants me to make my saturation less. And I've talked about this before. If I make my saturation less, it makes it... Uh, black and white, if I super saturate it, we can see that it's got more of a color profile there. Um, and what's notable is this is our white balance. How it's white balanced um, in your image is going to be based off your color temperature. Um, but how can we white balance? Let's say I'm using multiple different lights. I used a tungsten light and a LED light and the same thing to do uh, that. And maybe my image is coming out more orange or more yellow. I can take this eyedropper and find where this is the level of white I want everything to be on there. And notice how everything went from cool to warm just based off of choosing the white here. Um, you think you could switch the video and then the speed almost? Yeah. That's, thank you very much. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I could put it down here, yeah. right? Oh, uh, no. No, what I do? Okay. Uh, all right. You can't really control Z the... Um, the uh, Okay. Does that look better? Yeah. Okay. We're just gonna format it weird today and that's fine. I understand our, our projector is bad here at the campus, but okay. So let me go back and showcase just the difference. Uh, give me a second cause now, okay. So that's the difference. Lumetri on, Lumetri off. Okay. And if I had my color balance, color balancing on something else, we can see that if I'm choose a white area here, now everything's cooler. Did you see that minor change? How much, how big can I make it? All right. Just notice this up here is not supposed to be green. Okay. All right. So our white balance, and that's why you can put up a white card when you record something uh, for a white balance. Now, 
uh, computers. But if I hit auto again, look, it's going to go back to what it originally gave me based off of the color profile on the video. And honestly, this is very muted. Uh, the saturation levels low. I like to go way up with the saturation, especially on the red images. Now, what's notable is we, we can manually control our color temperature here, which we can see we can control our blue and our orange values. Um, different light bulbs give you different color values. So that's going to affect your whole image that you're taking in. So if you're using something more of a tungsten, which is what color value? Who knows what a tungsten bulb is like? And a tungsten bulb is probably like a light bulb that you got that is a non-LED light bulb. So if your light bulbs that are at home are like the old fashioned light bulbs that get really hot, uh, those are more, what color? It, more orange, yellow, yeah. So, so in order to get rid of that, we would add more blue. And the blue would combat the orange to make it more even colored. Okay. Again, LED is going to give you more of a blue tint. What do you? What is the? What is the light source that gives you the ultimate? Uh, 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 like thirty-two K Kelvin. Thirty-two is is kind of an LED light panel there. Um, who knows and who knows what the sun is is the sun warm or cold light cool light would be blue warm light would be orange what if you went outside and didn't color balance what or what how what should you color balance your outside light to this will be on the test it's 56K is outside light. So that's more on the orange spectrum, okay? So you would definitely need to, if you miss white balanced, everything's gonna come out orange outside. Make sense? Well, now it should. Now tint is more green and pink and we can change the tint based off of the tint level. This will give us a little bit of area to wiggle around and play with. But obviously, uh, green, I'm Hulk, I'm mad. Oh, I'm just Ken over here, right? Um, all right. His shorts. <laughs> His shorts are purple, not pink. So. But it's kind of opposite. Yeah. Th okay, Thanos or Hulk. There you go. There you go. Okay, exposure. Exposure is the level of light that's going to come in. So if we bring it down, we're making it the exposure. This is a digital way to open and close. What part of the camera? Huh? What well, part of the lens? I'll give you what? Oh yeah, that that's one of them. I was actually thinking of the part that's like your part you have it in your body as well. In your eye. Oh. The iris of the camera or the aperture of the camera um, is opening and closing. This is the digital version of this. Now, what happens if I add digital iris? Like, let's say I shot this really dark and I cranked it up. What do you think is going to happen? Made it really bright. Well, it's going to give a little haze level. We can see that like, oh, our darks aren't as dark here. And the more digital stuff we get in, the more artifacting and more uh, digital gain that we could increase because if I open my aperture this wide, I would need to, I don't know, bring my black level down here. And now if we watch in this area and I hit play, we're seeing the digital noise happen. And again, with certain cameras um, uh, making it uh, brighter, uh, it will affect your image because like this is a red one that uh, red camera and so you have all that information right there but if you have a mirrorless uh, camera it might not have that yes yeah yeah the, since this is yeah jason brings up a great point since this is shot on red we can actually raise the exposure way up and we still retain a lot of information whereas like Maybe if it's a lesser camera or even like your iPhone and you raise the iris, you're not seeing anything. So the computer has to add digital uh, uh, information and it'll make it look muddy or gross. So that's our exposure. What's contrast? Contrast is the contrast between the blacks and the whites. So if we crush it all the way here, we can see that like, oh, look, I'm, I'm, 
I'm very contrasty. It means the dark levels are darker and the white levels are a little wider. But our image opening the exposure up and raising a contrast actually looks pretty decent here, yeah? I mean, it's definitely a style of image. Uh, I want to go back to this. All right. Highlights are primarily white levels. So if I bring this up, it's going to highlight all of the brighter areas without affecting the darker areas. Shadows. Shadows are the darker areas. If I bring the shadows to minus 11, you can see all the darker areas get darker. Or if I bring it up, they get they get more lighter. So if you have a shadow on the face, you can use shadows to bring it, lessen it. But can you erase it? No, because there's always going to be in your image. There's always going to be that shadow. But you can manipulate it a little bit. All right, I'm going to make it a really stylized image. Our white level is just all the white. So you can see I'm just affecting the white levels. And I play with the black levels already. We can crush the blacks and make it so, look, there's no details in these black areas or I can bring it up and just make it there and of course I'm working on one still image here so it may play differently if I mess with things and we can see that there's some digital gain go oh, is he going yeah he was going some digital gain that's coming up here all right but we played with this okay let's say I color balanced it and I was super happy with how this image came out right here with just using my basic color correction. So now what I want to do is I want to match my image here. So what can I do? I'm just going to go ahead and do all the information all over again by like doing everything here and, you know, messing it all up and make trying to match it as best as I can. Or what's really simple is I can go to this image and be like, I can go into my effect control and I can see my Lumetri colors right here. And I can copy, Command C. And I can go back to my timeline, back to the next clip. And I can say Control Paste. But wait a second. What's going on here? Why does it look horrible? Well, remember, we had already started to play with the Lumetri. So now there's two Lumetris. So I'm going to go in and delete that one. Now, what's interesting is if we go back to our timeline, we look at the two images. Do they match? Not particularly. Close, but I would manipulate it a little bit because it seems like the close-up, the light level is different. Uh, I would say this image is darker on his face than this last image. All right, so what can I do? Well, I can raise the the exposure here. No, maybe I'll maybe I'll bring the shadows down a little bit on his face. Or maybe bring up the whites. No, it's really on his face. So let's let's bring up that and let's look at the difference here. That looks closer, right? It's not so dark on his face. And let's imagine. Now you could spend time and time and time on all of this. Okay. Now we want to match this image. So let's go in and we'll just go and copy this one's back to intro. I'm gonna go here and look, it hasn't been affected at all. So there's my paste. This seems even darker, right? Still doesn't feel like it matches perfect. So I would want to bring this one's levels up. And now I'm gonna bring up my ex okay, the shadows, but let's bring up the exposure a tiny bit. And now let's take a look. Very basic. Now, I don't like the black levels over here now, so I'm going to maybe undo some of the shadows and look at so those. What's the difference between contrast and shadows? Shadows are only dealing with black. Contrast deals with black and white. So look at this image. If I reduce my contrast, you can actually see that the black level is lesser here, but also the white values changed in the background and on his shirt. If I go back to heavy contrast, look how the white levels, we lost some details in his coat and even in the background here, both are being affected. Whereas if we look at our shadows only, we can see that like 
he, really, when I bring this up, everything's getting a big old haze because we're taking out all the shadows. But if you watch his coat, the details on the coats really aren't being affected because we're dealing with only dark to gray to black values, which is shadow. Good question. Um, okay, so now we have basic color correction there. We matched, and this is an element where you're going to want to go through, especially when you shot. Now, what if I shot an outdoor shot. Well, let's import something that's outdoor. Let's find something that might be a different color balance. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> rocking, rocking, and rolling down to the beach. I'm strolling. Uh, oh, I want Gav. Where's my Gav stuff? Things to edit. Live before midnight. Uh oh, okay. Horror San Francisco footage. What's this? Uh okay, hold on one second. Let me find the green screen. It's not really what I want. Yeah, that's a good example. Thank you. Uh, let's guess this. All right, listen, we're importing our files. All right, we have some BTS, which is a completely different camera as well. And is it, do we choose an indoor one or an outdoor one, Jason? What can indoor? All right, let's try this though. These are old. Well, this is a good enough clip for me, I think. Anyway, because the color is way different. Look at this. Look how blue this is. And why is this blue? But we're having light come through the window to be moonlight, right? And look, we have combination light. We can see how that light's orange versus this light's blue. It's just because of the color temperature. Now we are shooting, so mixed light here. Um, what can, let's mess with this and see if we can color balance it to match. And how will we do that? Well, of course, we can do a couple different things. We're going to go here. Let's hit auto and see what it can do. Okay, look, it already brightened up stuff. We can look at the color balance. Look, it's telling me to add more orange to make this warmer. And will I tint a little bit? And maybe I'm gonna tr allow it to do the auto color balance and choose somewhere that's white. And it gives it a little more greeny there. Um, all right, do, do we mess with the saturation? Look what happens on this camera when we mess with the saturation. It's like poor things level of saturation on everything. So different cameras will give you different values. And like Jason said, I can't really bring up the exposure here without really messing up elements of it. All right, so I can manually go by eye, but like looking, will these two match? Well, first of all, clean, clean, crisp thing going into this image here. Um, uh, that's why you want to use the same camera essentially, but we can kind of color balance it to try to feel similar. Um, and especially in this image, really, really hard. Now what's interesting too, if we're color balancing and doing something like this, I actually want to go into, uh, how do I hide this? Uh, oh, move to the bottom. There we go. Uh, window workspace. I want to go to my window and I want to, I want to, I actually can change my workspace. Oh, that'll mess it up for everybody. I want to go in and where are my scopes at? Here's my Luigi scopes. Now the scopes, <laughs> you can see shows me the different color levels. Um, I want to pull the scope over here, maybe. 
So as I play, we can see the different levels of green, red, and blue. And we can actually use this to comparatively match blue levels. Because if we're looking at this clip versus, check out where the blues are here, versus this clip, we can see our blue level is way more up here and down here, whereas like their blues are more varied. And you can use the scopes to help modify your image. And well, how do I do that, Tim? Well, I am going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do that by going back to color and show you some other ways that we can color correct, just using the basic one there. Now, the basic one, I usually do just a basic color correction, but we have other inputs. Now, I do want to show you uh, a couple of options we have here, um, which is a basic one that's an input LUT. A LUT is a way to bring in custom image, uh, custom different defaults. You can see I can choose based off of these different colors. It gives me a base color temperature that I can build everything off of. And then I can start with my LUT here and I'm still able to adjust um, everything based off of this image. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. Also, you can download LUTs. So I'm gonna browse. I actually downloaded one right here. Here's my standard. I'm gonna open. Enable LUTs. Where'd you go? Let's open this one. Let's go back. Okay, let's see. Uh, I want to go effect control. Let's do this. Let's go back to zero on this. Okay, that's what the image originally looks like. Crazy, huh? Um, all right. Let's go and let's browse. And let's try 12. Well, okay, it gives us a base area to work with. We can see that it automatically adds this. Well, and that's 12. Let's browse again. And I bought, I downloaded a bunch of different options here. Look, here's a black and white one. All right, let's browse. I got, I downloaded a thing of 25 different LUTs. Let's just see, kind of greeny, matrixy maybe. Knowing what you want, but this I just again let's let's just oh look this this one's bluish, um, but this can be our base area that we import into every single one of our clips is we can work off of this log right here, um, uh, and then from there you know okay let's bring it up and this is all our basic. Uh, but what I want to do now is like, okay, we're using our scopes, right? Let's And let's bring our scope over here for now. Uh, we're using our scopes. This is what our image looks like. Um, and let's go into creative. Now, creative is going to allow us to do so, a couple different things. Um, uh, we can change the intensity of the image, which really is uh, related to vibrancy. I don't really see much here, but look. We can go in and bring in our cre create. Okay. Our intensity is going to be our intensity of our LUT. So we can see we have a bunch of different LUTs here. Let's go back to one and I can bring the intensity or uh, up and down of my LUT and we can see how it changes. Which one do we like, Jason? 10? Look, that one's way more blue. And we can say, okay. Now we can add it, like make it look film faded. Just going to fade the film a little bit if you want. Sharpen, of course, <laughs> we saw the edges. This is a focusing tool. We talked about this before. Again, be very patient or uh, sparing with your sharpen. Uh, vibrance. Vibrancy is going to like show us a different element. It's kind of like saturation, but it... You can see that going all the way down doesn't take away all the color. Saturation, this is the control of our saturation level. We can make it look definitely more poor things like, okay, we got Oompa Loompa Man now here with our color balance. All right, and our tint balance here is gonna affect 
how much our tint is, but we can actually affect the tint of the colors and the highlights. So if we go and affect our, our, our shadows tint, now you can see, especially in certain areas, and let's bring that down a little bit. You can see that where now we're starting to really mess with the image and give all of the shadows that are in the image. And remember the shadows are everywhere on the image, more a pinky tone. And we can take our highlights and give everything more a green tone. And the highlights are the white levels of color. Did I choose a bad example with this? Where's, where's my highlights in here? Oh, I think it's because my balance is off. Okay. All right, you can see more of the green or yellow show up. But again, am I color balancing? Why would I make it look like this? Why do I want to do this? Uh, it's just all ways that I can affect this. Um, all right, let's turn our creative off. Let's turn our basic off. All right, we're back to our image. Now we're going to go into curves. What is curves? Curves, are, we can manually control our RGB, which is our red, green, blue of our image. And especially we can start with our white level right here. And the white level allows us to bring up the image. Now we're going to control really different elements of the color. So let's turn on our basic correction. Uh, let's turn off this. Let's cup our color saturation. Let's change our exposure down. Let's do auto here. Um, and we can see that with our basic correction, we can actually go in and curves. As you can see, I can control the level of white area. And because it's a curve, we can actually like obviously blow it all out or we can control areas of the spectrum. As you can see, the bend of your curve affects different elements of your image. And where I put, I'm, I'm using my pen tool here and I'm actually making a keyframe. And why is that? Because I can click and make a second keyframe and I can bring the dark levels of the spectrum, but keep the white levels up. So you can see that like, as the this line goes here, you can say white's over here and black's over here. And the more I, I bring down here, you can see the blacks are crushing. So I can actually go in and instead of just making it one, normal curve that raises the white all in one area is I can say, okay, I want to keep the darks here, but I want to raise the white. I want to make the white levels more white here. And as you can see, we're able to affect our color balance in this way. Now what's interesting as well is this controls our white. If I click over and do red, I have the same curve is what happens is if I bring up my curve here, I can bring more red. I don't like Snickers, um, but I can control my red level and note the scope over on the left. Using this allows me to bring my red levels up to where I would like it to be to match. Again, I can then go to my green and I can bring my green. Oh, I can click on my green curve here. And I, as you notice, I can control my greens uh, and I'm going to bring them with the red. And as you can see, pretty much raising the color level. Now let's go to blue. Blue, let's click on my blue. And you can see, I, this is a way that I can manually color balance. And as you can see on the scope, as I bring them all on top of each other, they're canceling each other, making the white. And we can see that it's kind of white balancing these colors together. But like, what if I want my image to be more yellow or blue, or this is how in a way that I can go in here and again, I can also say, hey, I want all, I want the blues to be on the darker area or actually up would give me more blue in the whiter areas. And I'm taking out the blues. I'm going to take out the blues of the black. And you can see that everything becomes more yellow as I get rid of my blues. Questions, comments? Okay. That's playing around with our RGB curves. Um, and that's here in our curves. And we can see that our hue saturations also have uh, curve levels where we can go through and mess with the level of saturation. Now, what does that mean? It's 
I can bring up my saturation levels and I can saturate around a specific color. Um, so I can mess with my hue saturation. So let's go with the saturation of pink. Let's go with the saturation of red. Hue versus hue. Again, this allows us to control the hue uh, of a certain point in the color index. We can mess around here. Again, if you're messing with this, you're mi probably doing like a minor, minute color change rather than uh, a different level. Luma is always going to be white and your hue of your Luma you can affect with. Hue with saturation. Or white level, it's saturation on saturation. Okay, why would I do this? Well, I'm just messing about with these to show you these curves. Are you going to do this? Maybe, probably not. Um, all right. Color wheel match. All right. Let's go into our comparison view. I go here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go or after. Okay. Comparison view is great. Um, what's it going to let me do is I'm going to go in here. It's going to give me before and after. So I can go in and mess with my image uh, and I'm going to raise my midtones and I'm going to make the midtones more blue. Uh, I'm going to do mess with my shadows. Bring my shadows up. What? Oh yeah, he just said. Tim, I sent a new video. Thanks, Geronimo. All right, and my highlight. My comparison view. What's happening? Why aren't I seeing it? Am I messed up? Like that one. Am I doing such minute details that uh, let me just should be working? Yeah, uh, I think it's not working on me right now. So, am I on the wrong source? Maybe that's the issue. Looks this. It looks right. Top right up here. That should be it. Yeah, just switched. Okay. Well, let me figure this out. We'll talk next week uh, since it's not, or maybe my computer is not working, but we can see it's changing as I change. Yeah. Um, yeah it looks like you're just not. So you can get it. Uh, where is that drop down? Right Up here? Yeah. Um, look. Because it's it's moving the left side every time you flip back and forth. You're changing. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, this down here. What's going? On? Is it comparison view that's not working? Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe that. Oh, okay, there we go. I just had to click comparison view again for some reason. It was it was glitched. Final Cut never messes up. Never ever. Uh, never, ever, ever. All right, let's do comparison view. All right, so now I should be able to, are we out of comparison view? Okay, there we go. All right. So it's, I'm able to make the changes. I'm just not, comparison view is not working right now. So I'm not going to mess with it per se, but we can see that we we can affect the color wheels here. All right, let's turn off that. Let's go into HLR secondary. Now this is a way you can replace an image or a color. Uh, you can set your color. We can go ahead and choose that one and it'll choose the S, uh, HSL for the color. And now we can, um, 
go in and refine the 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 color key there. Um, we can also denoise, uh, and we can blur within this one. Why would we want to do that? Well, uh, I don't really use this. Let's reset. Uh, okay, here here's the color. I'm going to set this color. I'm going to set the mid of the color. And we're going to do that color. Okay. All right. Now for correction, we can correct specifically that color. Now, as you can see, as I make it more pink, it's making this one specific color pink. Uh, and I can change the color temperature of that and the tint of that one color. Now you can see that is does this work always? No, because it's a I chose this area and it's choosing the range of color, which ends up being his face as well. Um, uh, you can see we can mess with this here. Uh, it's definitely has worked for me in the past in very certain situations, but um, uh, it takes a, a large level of refinement and, and time and care to mess with this. As you can see, I can, I can extend my color. I can change where the color values go and it can affect a different part. Uh, of the image. That's our HSL vignette amount. A vignette will allow us to um, add a vignette to the image. Uh, we can change where the midpoint is specifically. We can change the roundness or we can feather the edges. Why would we want to do this? Maybe we're doing a vision like someone looking in uh, and change the anchor points. Not a not a good mode, but you can you can find different ways outside of Premiere to do this. After Effects, so when we get into that, will affect us more. Uh, but realistically, these are the main that are the Lumetri color areas where we can go in and color. And remember, our scopes are best way to look at these images as well as color. I want you to play around with, but remember the copy and paste feature and then making minute changes in between the images are really going to help you match it the best. But seeing the scopes allow you to understand like, oh, my red level's way off comparatively to this image that has like so much information and it's so vastly different. How do these match? Well, do I hyperstylize? Do I black and white? What color are we going to go in? Questions, comments? We're going to end today's lecture there. We have a little bit of time to edit on your pieces. Oh, uh, while we're here, Michael sent me... A, a piece, um, uh, but it's uh, warning, it's loud at the end. Okay. Uh, Michael, you sent it where? Uh, I'm guessing in my, um, my Gav. So let's find it. There you go. Thank you, Michael. We're going to watch it. I hope, I hope that's fine. Okay, okay, well, what about... Ooh, Michael knows how to appeal to my heart. I'm going to stop sharing right now. Uh, stop share. And now I'm going to share again so we can see Michael's piece, uh, which is right here on Google Chrome. Uh, if I hit play, the, time. the shield edit. Heck yeah. Okay, uh, the thing I need to do is change my audio. So let's do this really quick. Um but I'll tell you right now, how do I feel about the shield? Uh, I'm pretty anti-shield, to be honest. Uh, don't uh, I'm not in the I uh, don't like the bloodline. Um, so I want Roman to lose. I'm also kind of want Seth to lose, even though he's going to help Cody win. Uh, but let's watch your edit. Okay, okay. Well, what about the time I took a steel chair? <laughs> to your back and changed the game forever. Sure, mother. I can reach you. I tried to forgive you. I'll bring it down. But I'll never forgive you for what you did to us. I 
I do miss the shield. Michael, that's good. Um, Michael, uh, let me tell you, first and foremost, uh, I like that a lot. I like you use black and white to showcase the old um, old elements. I do want to show this, and they're going to tell me, Tim, you need to slow-mo it. Uh, so I'll slow-mo it right now. No, that's quality, Tim. Uh, let's do... Let's do quarter speed. I want everyone to watch this edit. Uh, you have a flash frame in here, Michael. Um, so let's take a look at this edit. It's definitely not intentional. You see it? It's right there. You can see where the orange guy's shirts come on the screen. Now, what happens there? It, the reason that this happened is most likely Michael, uh, the source you're using of Seth Rollins talking, changed its cut before you finished the dissolve. So that means basically you're layering two pieces of video on top of each other, but the bottom video has edits in it already. It's just not one clip of Seth Rollins here, right? Uh, so seeing this, there's Seth Rollins. So before the, there's one frame and before Seth Rollins leaves the image, we see this image where we can see here's Roman Reigns right there. Right? So, Basically, the and there's Seth Rollins right here sticking his finger up. We can see his face right here. Here's his purple. And what's going on is essentially the footage you used went from the close-up to the wide shot, but there's only one frame. How do we fix this, editors? Cut the one frame. Well, if you cut the one frame and your dissolve isn't done, that then will flash to black. Shorten the dissolve. Yes, make your dissolve. Uh, Michael, if you make that dissolve like two frames shorter, you don't have this problem. Or cut your clips uh, so that they butt at a different area. Start your dissolve sooner so it ends faster. If, it, if you have your dissolve, which seems like a 15 frame dissolve, and you, you, you just, you can move where it ends by changing where your clip starts, if that makes sense. Uh, here, I'll show you an example. Let me stop my share. And let's share screen. Let's go to my premiere. All right. All right, first of all, let's let's arrange this. Oh no, did I save it as my editing? Oh no. Oh geez. Oh Marty. Oh geez. Oh, screwed it up. I screwed it up. All right. Screwed it up. Oh geez. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez! I fixed it. <laughs> fixed it. There we go. We're back here. All right. Let's change this to effect control. Okay. Looking here and like on our timeline, what's a good example is we have Mateo's. Uh, I'm never gonna remember this. Uh, this. Ronaldo, what's this guy's name? Who's this? Who's this soccer guy? What's his name? Oh, Ronaldo. Hey, I got it right. All right. Okay, cool, Michael. Good. 
All right. Uh, okay, it's the Ronaldo clip, and check it out. We know that this Ronaldo clip has edits in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my edit here, and I'm going to just simulate what you went through, Michael, as an example. Okay, let's do this, and let's do this. All right. Cool. All right. So what I'm doing here is I want I want to dissolve from this to him on the ground. Okay, but if I put my dissolve If I put my dissolve with the edit centered right here, we'll see that when I dissolve through, we have a flash frame, right? Look. Okay, so how can I fix this? Well, number one, let's change trying to position my cross dissolve. What if I make my edit the start point of the clip? Well, we can already see in the dissolve here that because my dis because I chose I chose the very last frame before the edit. If I start to dissolve here, it's automatically going to change to the next image. So I can't do that. So what if I what if I take my cross dissolve and then I put it on the side of the edit so that the edits changes? The edit is the ending point of the dissolve. Well, let's take a look. There we go. We have a winner, right? There's enough footage of him on the ground and enough footage of them doing doing the soccer. So there we go. That's the resolution. Or, oh, Tim, I really want to dissolve right here in this area. Well, what I'm going to do now is what if I have the clip and I know I need a certain amount of the kicking, right? Okay, and I'm going to change, I'm going to change the edit. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to count for that. Hey, if I put a cross fade here, if I put a cross fade here, but I left enough footage on my clip. Now, if I do the cross dissolve, we can see that the kicking lasts all through this 15 frame cross dissolve, because all I did was I, I cut the end po point of my clip 15 frames earlier. So now my dissolve, because essentially what the dissolve is doing is it's drawing out more of your footage, but it, the opacity level changes, right? It gets more opaque. And then that allows the other image, which is less opaque, to become more visible. See, it looks a lot. I see it looks better. Okay, great. Um, and uh, Michael, the other note I would say about your video is, yeah, it's loud, so you could bring your audio level and fade it in a little bit better um, there with your clip. But overall, I liked it, and yeah, I liked seeing the old Shield stuff. I liked how it matched and, and worked well for that image. Uh, good job. I'm going to stop sharing, uh, and I'm going to call this now our lecture for today. Hopefully, you learned the basic color correction there, uh, how to load a LUT, how to mess with those LUTs. Um, you can download LUTs for free online if you want stylized. Really, the LUTs allow you to like choose a horror LUT or a sci-fi LUT um, and mess with those. Questions or comments? Send off below. Uh, just like Michael, you should be sharing your work with me. Uh, I say this every week. I want to see your work. This is how we get better. All right. I am stopping recording.